Hi, welcome to Skip's Corner, where I cover Nashville's baseball history and events and introduce you to players, coaches, and other fans. I was thinking the other day about all the pitchers that I recalled pitching for the Nashville Vols. Lots of people remember in the 1950s and 1960s names like Claude Osteen and Jim O'Toole. Jim O'Toole won 20 games for the Nashville Vols in 1958. And there were two bonus babies that signed with the Cincinnati Reds, Jay Hook, who came to Nashville, and Jim Maloney in 1960 had a great season, at least for part of the season, because he was called up on July the 22nd after pitching in a game that was called due to rain, and he didn't get a decision. But his record ended up 14-5, and five, and he had 162 strikeouts. A lot of people loved Jim Maloney. I think Jim Maloney is still living in California. But there were others. In 1950, Bob Schultz won 25 games. I think it was the second most wins in a season for a Nashville Vols pitcher. And then there were, in the early days, if I can go back, Hub Purdue in 1908 won a game for Nashville against the uh, New Orleans Pelicans to win the Southern Association Championship. It was the third championship in eight years for Nashville. They won it in 1901 and 1902, and this third one was in 1908. A few years later, Tom Rogers, who was born in Sparta, was a great pitcher, pitched a perfect game in Sulphurdale, the only one, I think, that I can find, in 1916. And then uh, there was another guy named Red Lucas who pitched for Nashville, was actually from Nashville. He pitched in the majors and came back to play and coach for uh, Larry Gilbert in the 40s. Jack Harshman is one of the amazing stories, I think. In 1953, he won 23 games for Nashville. Now, that's a great stat within itself, but more amazingly is two seasons earlier when he was playing for Nashville as a first baseman, he led the Southern Association with 47 home runs. Larry Gilbert actually saw his talent and turned him into a pitcher, but that's amazing. 47 home runs in one season and two seasons later leading the league with 23 wins. In 1955, hometown favorite Roy Pardue. Roy was a southpaw pitcher from North High School. Everybody loved him, knew that he was going to be great. He went into the service, so he was out of baseball for a couple of years. But when he came back in 1955, won 17 games for the Vols. I think the next season maybe he won 20. And he told me that he hurt his arm, and his career was pretty much over. But he pitched in the city leagues in Nashville. Bob Kelly was a great pitcher for Nashville in the 50s. And we go back into the 40s, Vic Tamulus, who won 20 games for Nashville in 1942. Boots Poffenberger won 26 games in 1940. And Leo Twardy, Ben Wade, and Pete Mallory were always stalwarts on the mound for the Nashville Vols, especially during that 40s time period. There were a couple of great events, though, that I think happened that I need to call out. One was uh, by Dutch McCall, Robert Dutch McCall. He was born in Columbia, Tennessee in 1920. And in his first three seasons, he was mostly an outfielder. But after signing with the Nashville Vols, manager Larry Gilbert converted McCall to a pitcher. Another one of those great cases where where Gilbert could see the talent level and the talent ability that a player had. And in 1942 and 1943 with Nashville, McCall's pitching record was a combined 15 and 11. Not bad. But after a two-year stint in the military service, his 1946 season was exceptional. An amazing thing happened on April the 30th. It was his fourth game of the season. He'd been a relief pitcher for three games. Larry Gilbert gave him his first starting assignment, and he tied the Southern Association record for strikeouts in a game with 17. Now, in 1936, Jinx Poindexter accomplished that same feat for Little Rock against Nashville on July the 11th of 1936. But for the season, McCall led the league in strikeouts with 179 and finished 12-9. and nine. And he earned a call-up with the Chicago Cubs for 1948, where he went 4-13 and 13 in his only year in the majors. And he retired a few seasons later, I think in 1954. But that 17 strikeouts in a game is just an amazing feat. But perhaps there was no finer performance than the one George Jeffcoat pitched in a 1940 Southern Association playoff game. 
He was a brother to Hal uh, Jeffcoat, who would play for the Vols in a few years after George did. Born on December 24th, 1913, George Jeffcoat pitched for Nashville from 1939 through 1942. And with an overall record of 53 and 38 for Nashville, George Jeffcoat's best season for the Vols was in 1940, and he was 14 and 6, had a 3.78 ERA, and was second in the league with 121 strikeouts. But the great accomplishment that he performed came on September the 10th, 1940, in a Southern Association playoff game as Jeff Coates struck out seven consecutive Chattanooga batters on his way to tallying a league record 18 strikeouts. Now, 18 strikeouts is not in the record book for regular season, but it certainly was for the playoffs for, for the Nashville team. In that game, he also struck out the side four times, and from the 15 men he faced in innings three through seven, he fanned 14 of the 19 he faced. So that meant 15 of the men retired through that stretch. 14 were strikeouts. Two amazing feats by McCall, uh, feats by McCall and Jeff Coat, I think, are worthy accomplishments for Nashville and, and in the Southern Association. I read recently, I was looking at some yogiisms. You all know Yogi Berra's famous quotes, uh, like, if you see a fork in the road, take it, and nobody goes to that restaurant anymore. It's always too crowded. But one thing that struck me, he said, all pitchers are liars or crybabies. Now, I can't imagine that he thought that true for guys like Whitey Ford. Maybe he did. I don't know. He was a catcher and caught a lot of great pitchers, and maybe he knew pitchers better than anybody. But I just thought that was interesting. And it made me think of one pitcher for Nashville that I'm not sure if he was a crybaby. Maybe he was, or a liar. But there was one guy named Boots Poffenberger, and he was known for his heavy drinking and poor training habits. During two seasons, he played with the, with the Detroit Tigers, 1937 and again in 1938. And he pitched in three games with Brooklyn in 1939, and they were done with him. And national manager Larry Gilbert, once again, understanding the talent levels, took a chance on the temperamental Poffenberger. And after his splendid 1940 season, 26 and 9, uh, he would face not Gilbert's understanding of talent, but his ire. He was kind of hard to get along with. He'd sit up in the stands and drink beer with the fans, and it is said that Larry Gilbert didn't really care about that. If he wasn't pitching, he could do anything he wanted to as, he long, as long as he uh, came to the ballpark the next day ready to play or ready to pitch. So they had that great season, won 26 games and lost nine in 1940. Uh, Jeff Cope pitched that wonderful Southern Association playoff game, and the team won the, the Southern Association and the Dixie playoff series. Had a great season. That team in 1940 was chosen in 2002 during the 100th anniversary of minor league baseball as the 47th best minor league baseball team of all time. But something happened on June the 25th, 1948. Poffenberger was cruising along for the season. He was suspended for 90 days by league president Trammell Scott after throwing the baseball at umpire Ed Dutch Hoffman in the fifth inning of the previous night's game on June the 24th. Boots was ordered off the field by the arbiter after continual griping and use of abusive language. So being a crybaby and a, and a <laughs> crybaby and a liar, Yogi Bear didn't throw in there that he used they all use abusive language. But instead of leaving the field, Poffenberger turned and threw the ball at the umpire, hitting him in the chest protector but not injuring Hoffman. And commenting on Poffenberger's suspension, Larry Gilbert says, I'm through with him. He won't pitch for Nashville anymore. And he didn't. Now, this story is best told by author Austin Gisrael from Maryland, who wrote Boots Poffenberger, Hurler, Hero, Hellraiser. Uh, it was published in 2014, and I encourage you to get that book. I think he had access to Poffenberger's records. He was an old Marine, and I think his uh, photograph albums and other documents he was able to take a look at when he wrote that book. So take a look if you can and, and read Austin's book about Boots Poffenberger. Maybe not a liar or a crybaby, but he certainly was abusive of the English language and took advantage of an umpire on a uh, hot summer night in June of 1941. 
Well, I hope you've enjoyed hearing about Nashville's pitchers. If you'd like to send me a comment or a, or a request, you can send that to 262downright at gmail.com. Or you can go to Baseball in Nashville and click on the contact page, fill out the form, and send me whatever you'd like to send me, and I'll certainly reply to that. And I welcome any, uh, any comments that anyone has to make. You can find me on Twitter, and uh, certainly this podcast is on Apple Podcasts, and it is on Buzzsprout and Spotify and your favorite platform. I hope you listen it again. I'm grateful that you would. Until next time, this is Skip Nipper.